Good afternoon, thanks. Hey, Matt. Well, we haven't been over here in a week. Due to on Friday morning when I got up, the work attempt, I was aching. My shoulders and arms and chest were aching. So I said, okay, I'll just take some Tylenol and I'll be all right. But it didn't go away. The pain didn't go away. So I went on Google and Googled uh, shoulder and neck pain. And it led me to heart attack. I didn't get excited or nothing. I didn't panic. I started talking to the Lord. Lord, do is it my time to go, or do I get 15 or 20 more years like Hezekiah? In other words, I turned my face to the wall. I started talking to the Lord. I didn't call the emergency squad. I didn't call my wife. I didn't do none of that. I started talking to the Lord. And he told me, um, no, it's not your time. I said, all right, what should I do? He said, just get in your car and go to the emergency room. So I got in my car, went to the emergency room, and when I got to the emergency room, then I called my wife. I told her I'm in the emergency room, I'm having, you know, pain in my upper body. And I'm getting it checked out to see if what's going on. So I, once they start talking to me and, you know, what they do, they take a blood test. You know, anytime you come to the emergency room and you have, you know, chest and shoulder pain and all of that, they, they'll take a blood test first. And they see what's going on with your blood work. And uh, they came back and said, well, you're having a heart attack. I said, okay, where do we go from there? So uh, they gave me, what was it, uh, nitro drip. And they asked me, what is the level of your pain from one to 10? I told them 10. I wasn't howling out, you know, like, you, you know, you see on TV, a lot of people, they, uh, you know, on these different medical shows and stuff, they'd be fe featured. Me. When a person comes in there with a heart attack, they're uh, grabbing their chest and they're screaming and howling and doing all that. Come on, man, that kind of pain. I wasn't doing that, even though the pain was just tremendous. I, I just said, yeah, it's, it's still at a 10. And you know, once that, that nitro drop started kicking in, the pain went away and they uh, eventually, you know, took me to get my, the x-rays and uh, different things that they can see, what they can see what's happening. Oh yeah, it can. And all of that. And they told me it, it seems like you have some kind of blockage in your heart, but we can't see it. So we have to go in there and we don't even know exactly what we're gonna find. Yeah. Could be what cardiac catheterization. It could be a cardiac catheterization or, or a stent mm -hmm. or you know a bypass. Mm -hmm. So once they got in there they found out that you know one of my arteries were closed up on my heart, 90% closed up. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't see it from the front because it was in the back of my heart. Mm -hmm. And once they saw that, they uh, put a stent in. 
And I could tell as soon as they put that stent in, it seemed like I, I had all my energy back immediately. I didn't realize how close I was to death. But one thing I did realize, by us going to healing class every Tuesday for years, I had all that scripture in my spirit coming up to my mind. And I was thinking about, you know, what Paul was saying in Philippians, that um, it's better to be with the Lord is much more better. But to stay here is needed right now. And, you know, the Lord had mercy on me. Amen. He had mercy on me, and this is the psalm that the Lord gave me to meditate before when I was in there. Because uh, the strangest thing is that when you go to the emergency room on Friday, and if you're not in real critical condition, you got to wait till Monday before they could do anything, you know, do anything, because everybody's off on the weekend. Now, if I had, a, you know, been in really, really critical condition, they would have, you know, called in somebody or transferred them to another hospital or whatever they had to do. But I waited till Monday afternoon. Yeah, they were monitoring every day. You know, when you, when you have a heart attack, they hook you to all kinds of monitors and all kinds of IVs and all that stuff. And um, one thing I realized I, I, I had no fear of death. And see, this is one thing that we've been trying to tell you about healing class. We just don't come over here for nothing. We come over here so that you can build your faith up for healing because sooner or later you're going to need it in your life. You're going to need some healing in your life. As long as you're in this body and the older you get, Gravity kicks in and different other things, you know, what you eat and what you, you know, uh, however you're stressing yourself out. You know, if you work hard, like I have done all my life, worked hard, sometimes I would work 16 hours a day. And, you know, when you do that to your body, it puts stress on it. It's a cost. Right, you do have to pay that cost. But the Lord gave me Psalm 41. Now this is a psalm by David. And what stuck in my head, what I was meditating on, was uh, Psalm 41, verse 4. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Now, when the Lord gave me that verse, I had to really meditate on that. Okay. David said, I have sinned against you. But well, one thing David said in this psalm, Lord, be merciful to me. Amen. See, when you're in that type of condition and you're close to death, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, I mean, it's a thin line. It could have went either way. I could have went into that surgery and not made it out. I could have had a stroke, a massive thing. Right, anything could have happened. But I was saying, Lord, be merciful to me. Why did I say that? Because you need the mercy of the Lord to make it do anything. It's not based on your good works. I didn't say, Lord, I've been, you know, doing all this, you know, teaching your word and, and living a good life, and I've been good to my wife. I've been trying to I have raised my kids, and I have paid all my bills. And I, No. When you're close to death, you know, one thing that I realized, uh, I drive a sports car. That sports car didn't matter. Our house is paid off, that house didn't matter. I had just picked up on Wednesday our um, wheel and testimony. 
So all my affairs were in order. Right? I have an insurance policy. And you know, none of that stuff makes any difference when uh, you're on the verge of either being in the land or the living or the land or the dead. You, you, when you know that at any moment you can be with the Lord, that's, that's, we all got a certain amount of time here on earth. So when you realize that your time may be up, I said, be merciful to me. Heal my soul. I didn't say heal my spirit because my spirit is healed. It's the soul part of man, your mind. I had to get my mind on the Lord. And then, for I have sinned against you. Sickness comes from sin. Now, I didn't know what sin I had done, but the more I meditated on this word, he told me that you were getting ready to preach a message on Sunday that I didn't want you to preach yet. Because even though I have preached this myself, I am not the Holy Ghost police. Amen. But it could have started separating the tares from the wheat. Right. And I may have pulled up some wheat. Mm -hmm. That was my sin. Because when you're a preacher, you have to say what the Lord is telling you to say. It's not what you have studied about. It's not what you have meditated on. Because... See, when, when you're on your sick bed, the Lord can talk to you. Because why? Because you're being still. I mean, even though my family was coming over there and friends were visiting and they were, you know, praying and talking and everything, I was just being still and listening to what the Lord was saying. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do what you want me to do. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to teach this word the way you want me to teach it. And he said, okay, I'm giving you a testimony right now. Your testimony is that I am real. God is real. And if you say, be merciful unto me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against you, you will be healed. You will be healed. And when you say, I have sinned against you, you confess that sin before the Lord. You say, Lord, I, I was getting ready to mess up. I didn't realize what I was doing. That's right. First time. I didn't, you know, a lot of times you'll do something, you'll say something, and you don't even realize what you're doing. can't take it back. Right. So, I do have a series behind this, and I have a testimony behind this. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity again to come minister your word to your saints. I thank you for being merciful unto me and healing my soul. I thank you for pointing out my sins against you. I, I'm so grateful that I'm here because I know I didn't have to be here. I know it's only because of you that I am here. It's just because of your mercy. It's not nothing that I have done or how good I've been, it's because of your mercy. Because I realize a lot of things that we are doing, we don't even know what we're doing. But one thing that I have learned, Lord, that I have to say what you tell me to say. And I have to do what you tell me to do. I have to stay on your path. And I pray that the saints, when they hear this message, that they will stay on your path. Amen. So that you can be merciful unto them and heal their soul, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Psalm 41 starts off, this is a psalm of David. It says... Psalm 41, 1, blessed is he who considers the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. 
I have always considered the poor. I have always considered the poor. That's one thing that we have done. We we have always given to people, regardless of who they were. We have always let people stay at our house. Even if we knew that they were some bad little children, mm -hmm. that you know something might be missing when they leave, you know, but we would still do that. And we got blessed because uh, Proverbs 19 17 tells us, He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. The Lord will pay you back. You don't have to worry about somebody's asking you for money on the street. No. Give it to them. The Lord will them. pay you back. He will. The poor. He give you more than what Jesus you said, you're going to have the poor with you always. Yes, they, they're going to be here. Now, Matthew, the 25th chapter, Jesus really makes this plain and simple. This is when he separates the, the sheep from the goats. Amen. You said Matthew 25. Matthew 25, starting at a verse, uh, I guess it starts at verse 24. Because, you know, God is so good. He is really, really good. Why do you know that? Because he spared me. He spared me. He gave me more time here on earth. And you know, my wife just said, I'm just glad that you made it. I mean, financially, she would have been all right, but right. I could see it in her myself. face that she really needed me with her. Amen. <laughs> That's why I was saying, Lord, have mercy on me. It's far better for me to be here than to depart. Now, it actually starts at verse, um, I'm going to start at verse 34. But this is talking about the Son of Man will judge the nations. That's what this plays into. On verse 34 of his 25th chapter, it says, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's, our, that's, that's the saints. That's the saints. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothed you? Oh, or when did we see you sick, or in prison, and came to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you have did it to the one of least, of the least of these, my brother, and you have did it to me. That's what this is. What this is. What this this family of God is all about. Taking care of the, the family of God, and you learn that in from the Word of God that you're supposed to be a family. And where that does, it transfers over to your family. That you don't have no difference between people. You don't. You don't. You don't even get into that. You love one another as Christ has loved you. And this is not a love. If you do something for me, I'm gonna do something for you. You do it for. You do this for this person 
because you have a love for them, a copy love, mm -hmm. real love, and, and you're not worried about what you're going to get. Sister said unconditional love. That's right. And this is what he's talking about in this passage. He said, inasmuch as you had you did it to one of the least of these, my brother, you did it to me. Now, Psalm 34, verse 19 says, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. That is so true. You're going to go through something in this world. And you know, we have seen people, you know, they get sick, and they say, well, when is this doctor going to heal me? You know, that never came to my mind. No, we are. We when, are I, when, I was, when I was laying on that on that sick bed, it never came to my mind that a doctor was going to heal me, because I, I had already said, "Be merciful to me." I, I was trusting God. Tell them what to do. Right, I was trusting God. Psalm thirty-seven, verse thirty-nine says, "But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord." He is their strength in the time of trouble. That's, right. That's where your strength is. When you're in trouble, your, everything comes from the Lord. Everything. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. See, a lot of times, I realized this when I was sick. The Lord was revealing to me, don't everybody like you? Like you might think they like you. But I was, had already had it in my spirit, I have to love my enemies. And I have to pray for them who despisefully use me and abuse me. I have to do this. I have to love them too. But that don't mean that everybody's going to love you. Now in the second verse of this forty. First song. It says, The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he will be blessed on the earth. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. They gave me a lot of strength. I said, This is the Lord. I'm going to give you that one. First, this is verse. Uh, verse two of that forty first song. Okay, I'm there. Preserve. Mm -hmm. Psalm thirty three verse nineteen says, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. It's all because of the Lord that does all this. You have to give all the glory and all the praise to oh, yeah. God. Even when you are on your sick bed you still give him all the praise and all the glory. You trust him. That's right. You keep your trust in him. You don't put your trust in no doctors or no medicine or no procedure or nothing like that. You trust God. That's what you trust. And it says um, in 1 Timothy 4 8 it says, For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. Sure, I exercised every day, but it just profit little. You said first Timothy. And that was First Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse eight. Let's look at Psalm. 41.3 The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed. I can, I can testify all this is true. You know, a lot of times, you know, when you are, are in a ministry and you're, you're reading these verses and, and you know, you're believing them and you know, you're taking them into your spirit. 
but when something actually happens to you, these scriptures come alive. Yeah, they are alive. They come alive in your life. Like Psalm 73, verse 26 says, My flesh and my heart fell. My flesh and my heart was fell. Amen. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. It's all about God. Yes, it is. That's, his, that's why we're here. We serve his purpose. This is why it says in 2 Corinthians 4, chapter, the 16th verse, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outer man is perishing, Yet our inward man has been renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way and glory. This, these scriptures, I, 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 used to, I read them all the time, but it didn't start making sense until... I actually was talking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. What do you mean talking with the Lord? The Lord was quoting these verses back to me. Mm -hmm. Because I had read them. They were in my spirit. I had put the word of God in my spirit. That's what healing class does. Right. It builds your faith up for healing. And when you when you are on your sick bed or you something happens to you, you, you know, you go through an affliction, what happens, the Holy Spirit brings all these scriptures to remembrance. Well, it says the word heals us. Right. And it it's brings it all to remembrance, but not only to remembrance, it makes it real right. in that your life. Brings healing to your body. In Philippians, the second chapter, it was this man. This is kind of like what I re reminded, the Lord reminded me of. Because as long as you're doing the right thing, he can have mercy on you. He will have mercy on Because a lot of times we'd be overworking ourselves and You know, not getting enough sleep, not eating the right food, because we're working for the Lord. We, 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 you know, that's the way I, I feel with this ministry that the Lord has put me in. It's more important for me to get in the Word of God sometimes than food or water. That's right. That's true. But here's what is written in uh, Second. Uh, Philippians the second chapter because there was a man over here that was doing that and you know what not to cut you off Go ahead. that's what uh, you know when the uh, disciples that went away to get some bread and water for Jesus and he was at the well with the woman the Samaritan man yeah. and they returned and they said well, don't, aren't you hungry don't you need something to eat and he said I already ate because he was given a word, so he, he survived by the word of God. He was given a word to mm -hmm. the woman. Mm -hmm. So he said, I already ate. This is Aphrodite's in this second chapter. But the verses that really stuck with me was verse 26. It said, since he was longing for you all and was distressed because he had heard that he was sick. This is Paul talking about Epidemius, that he, he heard that he was sick. Amen? Mm -hmm. And it says, verse 27, for indeed he was sick, almost unto death. Mm -hmm. I said, woo, right. how true this is. But the God had mercy on him. Mm -hmm. And not only on him, but or me also, right. lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. And that that became true in my life when I looked at the kids around the bed, and you know, my friends around the bed. 
I said they would have more sorrow than 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 I would. Mm -hmm. Because I know absent from the body is present with the Lord. And I know it's far better to be with right. the Lord. They came from out of town. They right, they were from, from out of town everywhere. Right. And it, it made me realize something that somebody's listening to this word. Yeah. That we're not just doing this in vain. Mm -hmm. I called a few people and that word went everywhere about you. Right, it went everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now here's the verse, verse 4. Of that 41st chapter of Psalms. Called on the prayer of the saints. Pray. It said, uh, I said, Lord, be merciful to me. See, you have to say this and believe what you're saying. When you're asking the Lord to be merciful unto you, when you are sick and on the deathbed, on the bed of sickness, and, and you don't know whether you're going to make it off of it. No, you don't. Back in Psalms again. Psalms. 41, okay. verse 4. You have to say, Lord, be merciful on you. You, do. you, have, to ask. you have to ask him to heal right. my soul. Right. And you have to tell him, for I have sinned against you. Right. It okay. wasn't that I have sinned against anybody else. Right. I have sinned against God because I was getting ready to do something that God didn't want me to do. And you know my thoughts. You know what we be thinking. And with most preachers, what comes out of their mouth has power. It does have power. It has power to build you up or, or it has power to tear you down. Or tear you apart. You know, it, it can, you it can destroy somebody's down. life. You know, a preacher has to be very careful yeah. with what comes out of his mouth. He has to meditate on this word. This is what I have learned since I, you know, this happened to me, right, that nice. what I thought the word was saying, it wasn't really saying what I thought it was saying. Right. And right. what I found out, once you, you know, read the, you know, whatever the Lord has given you to teach or preach on, you have to pray. You have to pray over that to get the proper interpretation of what the Holy Spirit is saying, what he wants you to say to the saints. Because when you study the four gospel accounts of Jesus, he never said that it was going to hurt anybody, no. especially when they were sick or anything. He wasn't trying to tear them down, tell them about how bad you've been, and you them. know you should have did this, and you didn't do it. And, no, 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 no. To condemn them. He didn't come to condemn nobody. Abundant. Amen. He came to save. That's right. Give him life. Psalm 32 5 says, I acknowledge my sin to you. And my iniquities I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquities of my sin. Amen. See, you have to be real with God. You said it's, 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 it's me. That's right. It ain't them. It ain't nobody else. It's me. I'm acknowledging my sins before you. I was getting ready to mess up. You have to tell the Lord that. Psalm 51, verse 1, here's what David said. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sins is always before me. That's what David said when he messed up. That's we all messed up. up. We all got to say. You know, but a lot of times we don't realize we're messing up because we forget that God, if, if you are a child of God, God is looking at you all the time. You see everything. There's nothing hidden. In private and in public. There's no thoughts on nothing. And what stunned me, he was saying, For I have sinned against you. Mm -hmm. 
That, that really stuck on me right. because a lot of times you can get so self-righteous. You hear that? You and me can get so self-righteous that we say we don't have no sin. We get so self-righteous that we say that we're under grace. That Jesus died for my sins past, present, and future. But what we don't do, we don't confess our sins. Right. We have to confess them and, and repent. You have to confess your sins in order to be forgiven. Well, I'm not sinning. Wait, keep living. You don't you keep if you're really walking with the Lord, the Lord is gonna touch you and He's gonna tell you what your sin is. If you say that I don't have no sin, I'm already been forgiven all my sins, just keep 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 right. past. Or, or just keep, be just sent. keep living. That's what you do. Keep living. Thinking that and sooner or later, the Lord is. If you really a child of God, he gonna He's tell gonna you. tell you. He chastens those He loves. He is gonna. He is gonna tell you. Psalm two. I mean Psalm six, verse two says, "Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak." You know, when you're laying in that sick bed and you hooked up to all these IVs and all the other you know, whatever they hook you up to, and you know, I had a nitro drop and then I had something else coming in my body on that time. It was on a heparin drip. Heparin drip or whatever it was. They could have clocked for the travel any minute and kill you. When you're close to death gates, that's when you really start praying. Yeah, he was on a heparin. That's when you really start praying. And this psalm it said, Have mercy on me. That's right. Oh Lord, I am weak. Oh Lord, heal me, mm -hmm. for my bones are troubled. That's oh, right. Poor was I in pain. He was in trouble. That's for sure. My soul also is greatly troubled. That's right. Your mind says, Okay, what did I do? What did I do to deserve this? It ain't about what did you do to deserve it. Listen to what the Lord is telling you. He said that you sin. Right. That's right. Then you have to say, okay, what did I do? You saying it wasn't what sin was it, Lord? And he'll tell you, most of the time in a saint's life is self-righteousness. Right, right. That's a sin. In that area. You don't have no righteousness. No. We yes. have the righteousness of Jesus. Right. It's, it's that right. is our righteousness. That's right. He is our sanctification. Mm -hmm. It says, My soul also is greatly troubled, but you, O Lord, how long? That was the question. Mm -hmm. How long? Right. Well, for me, it was Friday. Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday I got healed. Right. It was three days. Right. It was like I was in the belly of the whale. Right. <laughs> Waiting on the, for you to tell the truth and the whole truth of that. Right. <laughs> you know, I was in the belly of the whale like Jonah. Mm -hmm. I know what the Lord had told me what to do, but sometimes, even though you know what to do, you say, I'm going to do it this way. Right. I mean, you can go on the internet, you can hear what people are saying and all of that, and you say, well, that sounds good, I think I'm going to use that. Mm -hmm. That ain't what the Lord told you to do. He told you to use He told you to do that. that the devil didn't do it. So as saints, because mm -hmm. most of the people that are self-righteous on the internet, a lot of them have passed away. Yeah, they've gone. they running around. Going home early. Right. Because they would not hush like They won't hush up. Won't hush then up. it says, Return, O Lord, deliver me. Mm -hmm. O save me for your mercy's sake. Mm -hmm. That that mercy just kept coming up in that's my right. mind. Have mercy right. on me, mercy. Lord. Mercy. You know, that's all you can do is throw yourself on the mercy of the Lord. When that's you have messed up that's and you are on the sick bed. He the only he the only one who can fix it. He like, said he could make the crooked straight. He he the only one who can do that. And you got to have your soul healed. What right. what is your soul? Your soul is your mind. The way you thinking. Emotions yeah. and all that stuff. 
And there'd be some stuff too. Sometimes. You can't see your mind. Mm -mm. But you know that some of the things that you have been thinking about, you shouldn't be thinking about. Mm -hmm. Well, where does those thoughts come from? Those thoughts that hit your mind are coming from the enemy. That's right. Because if it's coming from the Lord, it's coming from inside. Mm -hmm. Inside out. That's right. The enemy puts it from the outside in your mind. In your mind. And the Satan be hoping you're going to use it. <laughs> Psalm 103 says, Psalm 103, verse 3 says, Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Praise God. Thank you for all your word. Yes. Isn't that good? Go to James, the fifth chapter. See, when you have meditated on all these verses and you have read these verses over and over again, because I, a lot of times I, I was, you know, when I, um, I'm teaching, I said, well, I said that before. So sometimes you try to look for something else to say it in a different way. But what I'm learning, the Lord wants you to say it the way he says it. Right, the way you say it. You would say it in a different way. You don't have to come up with no new yeah, verses. James. You just say what he says to say. Right. I don't care Here in James, the fifth chapter. You better say it. You better say it. I said that already. They're not paying no attention. Say what you the 13th verse says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. That's right. I was there. That's right. I was suffering and I was praying. Right. Was I saying, put it into pain. action. That's right. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. I'm cheerful now, so I'm praising God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm praising the Lord. Right. And then it says, is anyone among you sick? That's right. Let him call for the elders yeah, of the I church mean, and the let them time. pray over him, yeah. anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. And the prayer of faith That's right. will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. All this what God says, see, this is one thing that you got to know about the Lord. In the world we live in, there are three sides to every story. It's your side, it's my side, and then there's the truth. You got to know the truth. You got to have an anchor of your soul. Regardless of what how I think about it or you think about it, we have to have the truth as an anchor of our soul. We do. And Jesus is the truth. That's right. He is the way. He is the life. Amen. No one comes to the Father but through Him. Amen. That's the only way you get to God. And, and you know, you have to really know this for yourself right. because when I'm laying on that sick bed, I know how to get to the Father. That's right. I knew how to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Jesus. And I'm not talking about no, you know, no rehearsed prayer, no made up mm -hmm. prayer. I was saying, Lord, be merciful unto me. That's right. Have mercy on me. Right. I'm in pain. Right. I don't know if I'm gonna make it out of here. Right. And did you hear that still quiet voice? A year healed. Right. You won't go home. You're not going home yet. You're not going home yet. I have you use for you. You're going to go to your home. Right. Home. The Lord tells you. You know, if the Lord's got use for you, it don't matter what kind of accident you're in, plane crash, boat, sinking, or whatever. If, if, if the Lord has use for you, you're going to make it through that. Amen. Because it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you from them all. And it has to do with, do you, will you serve my purpose? Amen. <laughs> are you willing? Like he told the man when he held the hand out, are you willing? Yeah, you got to be willing.